The Alban Garage Challengers and the GNM Mechanical Services Two Wheel Drives have recently produced some of the best battles within the Asset Alliance Group Scottish Rally Championship, as the crews headed north for round one, the McDonald and Monroe Speyside stages was to prove no exception. An absolutely stacked entry lined up to tackle the nine stages, with two and four wheel drive well represented, led off by the returning Greg McKnight and Harry Marchbank. They are looking forward to it. It should be a good battle. There's a lot of quick guys out, so it should be good. All ready to annoy the Mark IIs? Well, good. same as last year. We'll try our best. We're just... Uh, Kyle, my co-driver, is only a second event, so we're just here for a bit of fun and see how we get on and uh, if we can challenge their times, I think that's all we can ask. Well, we did a Grand Prix last year. That's, that's the last time we were out, so... Yeah. But it'll be interesting to see how we compare with all the boys that were going last year. New car, yeah, no, so it's a completely different animal to, to the last one, so take a bit of getting used to. We've had a little bit of time in it, but not a lot, so that's probably what today is more about. That's what Cooper Park's for. Yes, a wee test. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Six stages made up the first half of the day, kicking off with the traditional two runs of Cooper Park. And taking the early lead was the former two-wheel drive champions. McKnight and Marchbank immediately on the pace in the yellow escort, despite a misfire. They headed into second service with a 17-second lead. Oh, look at that. Listen to this. But things were much tighter for second. The new combo of Paddy Monroe and Andrew Stevenson held the place after six stages. Paddy and Andrew absolutely loving the stages. They had just four seconds over reigning junior champion Robert Proudlock and Stephen Brown. The 208 bang on the pace despite an overshoot in SS5. Is this Robert? It is Robert, yeah. Is this good? It was even closer for fourth, Craig Rutherford and Ian Fraser struggled through the park with a sensor issue but were right on the pace once it was sorted. The Mark II tied on time after six stages with the Evo of Johnny Mackay and Rachel Matheson. Mackay and Matheson really made a meal of Cooper Park. Seventy-sixth after stage one, they were back on it straight away and were tied with the escort, despite losing their exhaust in SS5. <laughs> David Wilson and Kyle Gordon were absolutely flying. Second two-wheel drive car after four stages, they dropped time with an overshoot and damaged exhaust in the next two, but were still in the mix. An amazing run in a Clubman spec BMW. Five seconds back, challenger sponsor Simon Hay and co-driver Callum Jaffrey were enjoying their return to the SRC. Simon pleased that the old Evo was still a force to be reckoned with. Brett McKenzie had made headlines for the wrong reasons, rolling on the VIP day. Luckily, the damage was superficial and Brett and Barry Young were able to start. But unfortunately, the troubles continued. The Evo battling with no intercom in the morning. On, 21 seconds further back, it wasn't a particularly good morning for Dougal Brown and Lewis Rochford. The former two-wheel drive champions struggling to find a comfortable setup in the morning stages. Oh, 
Rounding out the top ten, Matt Calderwood and Phil Sandham were another evil crew returning after a long break. Getting back into the swing of things, they briefly visited the same ditch that had claimed Freddie Milne, but were getting quicker with each stage. Already missing, Fraser Smith and Nicky Addison were OTL after the back of the dashboard fell to bits in SS1. Gordon Morrison and Ian Parker fell off the road in SS5. And making a more bruising exit, Ross McDonald and Matthew Johnston's day unfortunately ended when they modified the Evil's front end on a tree. Going all right. Uh, aye, good stages. Bit, quite loose. Yeah, a lot looser as I expected. Um, but no, good, good times so far. We've got a wee problem with the car. It's a misfire. Um, I think it's a throttle position sensor, but I don't think there's anything we can do with it. So we're just going to have to hope it doesn't fail altogether. Yeah. It's like just every now and again I get a misfire out of a sharp corner. As soon as I give it full throttle, it's there's just nothing. So yeah, um, hopefully it'll last out. Yes, we have got a smile on our face every time we see you, Fiona. Oh, thank uh, you. That's really yeah, 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 yeah. And every time Miss Mom takes me into the wood, it makes me smile. Oh, <laughs> yeah, does it? <laughs> yeah, indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but no, it was good, good fun. Yeah, good fun. How are yeah. you finding the stages? So that last one was slippery, but the one before it was grand. We had a wee bit of a an overshoot, I'd say, and um, hit a bank and had to reverse. Maybe lost about 10 seconds, so not the greatest, but up until that point, the car felt brilliant. I mean, there's so many different competitors that are saying they had a moment in the same bit, so it's just one of those horrible, wet, claggy bits in the stage that everyone has to deal with. Three more stages would round out the day. Calderwood and Sandham continued to get quicker, the Yellow Evo ending the day 11 seconds down on Brown and Rochford. The Mark II crew happier in the afternoon, but still searching for the ideal car setup. Late flat right three. Repeat, late flat right three. Then flat left one, C70. Flat right two, in over a crest. Keep it going, flat right two. Keep it going. Flat. C160 over a flat crest and dip and small flat crest. 80 flat crest, 100. Yep. And then left one takes the four, takes the five. The hit that had damaged the exhaust did more damage to the BMW than Wilson and Gordon had originally thought, slowing their pace in the afternoon oh, and they slid nice. back to eighth by the end of the day. Still, they have to be encouraged by their pace. After some work in service, Brett McKenzie was able to have Barry's voice in one of his ears for the afternoon. Not ideal, but an improvement over the morning. It's the Aerofleet Evo ended up 16 seconds back from the Albin Evo of Hay and Jaffrey. Simon saying the old car did well, and so did the old man in the passenger seat. Rutherford and Fraser couldn't keep Mackay and Matheson at bay over the afternoon fifth at the finish and only their second event in an escort was still an excellent result. <laughs> 17 seconds up the road by the end, Mackay and Matheson were very happy at the finish, especially as they beat Evo rivals Scott Peacock and Craig Wallace by a whole second. Even more exciting was tying on time at the end of the day with Munro and Stevenson. The Mark II crew really enjoying themselves, probably driving a bit too sideways in the afternoon. But their fastest time in SS1 gave them the nod over the Evo and they took second in the Challengers and third in the two-wheel drives. Just six seconds up the road, it was an excellent drive for Proudlock and Brown. Top challenger, second two-wheel drive and a perfect test session before they continue their BRC and Stellantis campaigns. Yeah, really good. We've been finding out so much with this car. It's been 
non-stop learning from the word go. I mean, on these stages, they're just unreal. And they're, they're the right place to put in, in your knowledge and learn more. So, yeah, we've had a really enjoyable day. But 37 seconds up the road and just missing out on an SRC top 10 finish, it was an excellent return to the woods for Greg McKnight and Harry Marchbank. The misfire thankfully not coming to much, and they were very happy with the finish. Perfect start. So I wanted to come here to obviously get a good result, start the championship. So yeah, we couldn't ask for much better. Yeah, excellent. Have you enjoyed the stages today? Yeah, brilliant. Yep. Yeah. Um, quite loose, quite quite slippy, but yeah, good stages, fast. Um, suits the escort well. So yeah, brilliant. Good, excellent. And Harry, how's it been from your side of the car? Because not spoken to you today. No. Yeah, really good to be honest. Um, again, just as Greg said, you know, we came here for a, a decent first result and. Uh, it's paid off. So. And you've yeah. got it, good, yeah, yeah, excellent. So what's next? Uh, Jim Clark, the, the Reavers, yeah. So that is the plan, to do the whole championship. So we'll just take it a rally at a time and see. So it's first blood to the Yellow Escort, and with two tarmac rounds next, they will remain one of the crews to beat. Up next, the Jim Clark Reavers rally in May.